we reached it at an equation. I think if you remember, we this equation. This is the number of uh, filled states in the sphere. This one. And uh, it is total volume of the total sphere. Do you remember it or not? So if you remember it, you should remember that to find the number of states. And uh, this to find the number of states, this is the K space volume because we plot energy versus k diagram dispersion relation and it is a k space jahan par hum number of atoms dekh, number of states dekh rahe hain kitni number of states filled honge within that particular energy range e and e plus d jo humne already last class mein kiya hai and to find the number of filled states here this n it is total volume divided by volume of single state ye and that is total volume is actually it is a sphere for three dimensions so that is 4 by 3 pi r cube. Yeah. R is the radius of sphere. Here we have a k cube because we are in the k space. This, this is the k space. Okay, and we are in k space here. So in k space, we have a vector radius as the wave vector k. So this is here. So that is why it is pi by a, pi by b, pi by c in all the three directions, x, y, z. So for a sphere, these all are equal. So it is actually length bracket into height. So it is actually length cube. Yeah, this single state cube. So pi by L cube. The K space volume is four by three pi K cube and number of filled states will be V sphere by V single state. And these are actually for counting double on plus X and minus X directions. That's why we are dividing by two for each three dimensions. So this is a three dimensional case when we have the uh, this density of states in three dimensions if you see then derivation for two dimensions since we are in the we have a, only two dimensions and one is the confined one so that's why we are taking only two directions here two dimensions so in two dimensional space we will have a sphere rather than uh, the we will have a circle rather than the sphere so that is why it is k space volume of sphere so it becomes area of a sphere a circle actually this pi r square r is same for k so it's a two dimensional plane in which we will see the number of filled states actually and instead of three dimensions we have two dimensions here these okay so it becomes pi by l square number of filled states becomes total uh, this actually it becomes area now because it's a 2d case we don't have a volume in 2d we will have only area and we will have one once we have only area we become it becomes single state into two is because of spin factor up spin and down state because one state occupies two electrons so two particles so two particles one will have spin up one will have spin down that's why this two here and these two are actually for that counting it is called a redundancy in the counting and if you find l n from here it is this Simply, if you see oh, density of states, this is n is k square l square by 2 pi. This k square l square by 2 pi. And when you put k equal to 2 m e divided by h cut square, here it becomes this. k is equal to this. So k is square, is it? So it will square and root will cancel out. It will remain 2 m e divided by h cut square. And solving this equation from here, using this into this equation. And when we solve this, we are left with m l square e divided by h cut square into pi, this. Now density of n states is dn by de, simply. You can simply do, differentiate with respect to e this. So don't, no need of do use this chain rule, okay? You can use this as well, dn by dk, then dk by de, that can be also used. But if you directly differentiate n here, with respect to E, you will end up with this equation, L square M by pi H cut square. This is the density of states, number of states per unit energy range. 
per unit energy actually energy is in the k space so we are finding the density of states in the k space and that is defined as number of unit uh, filled states per unit energy how many states are filled per unit energy there so this is for if you find the volume density that means per unit volume so then you will divide by the volume volume is in the three times it is v cube l cube sir aawaz nahi aa rahi hai aawaz cut kya rahi sensor ka phone so this is the density of states per unit volume per unit energy range so what we have earlier actually divide derived this this is per unit energy range here only if you want to find it per unit volume you divide just by the volume of the k space so k space here in this two dimensional case is a sphere and that will be simply by l square only okay total so that is how it has derived it has been derived so this l square and l square will cancel out it will remain m by pi h cut square and this m has been reduced uh, this replaced by the effective mass because when the electron moves from valence to conduction band its effective mass changed as because of potential change neighboring potential of the charge carrier so g this becomes in the case of two dimensions density of states this g means it is density of states per unit volume per unit energy range and if you see from this if you read this and that 2d density of states it is independent of the energy we don't have any energy dependence for the number of states per unit energy range it is independent of that and and as this density of states if you energy gap is reached there is a significant number of available states when you go to the top of the energy gap that is conduction band for 1d case so we have one dimension free here quantum wire this can this is called as quantum wire and using the same approach as we have seen used previously for two dimensional case volume of a single state it is pi by a simply because in one dimensional it will take a line simple uh, this is linear linear dimension that is pi by a and that is pi by v that is pi by l because dimension of the that k space is l so if you take the volume that is line in instead of volume it is now length because we are in the one uh, only one dimension in three dimensions it was volume in two dimensions it is area in the one dimension it is line length and how to find the number of states on this line that is totals that is line divided by v single state into 2 that is spin factor into 1 by 2 that is redundancy factor and if you see here it is k because the line l is actually k that total line so that is a wave vector divided by pi by l so that is k l by pi i already told it in the last class it so i'm just finishing it up here now if you want to find the density of states for 1d case it is k l by pi k ka value put karna you use this value of k which you already know and once we put up this value we are left with under root of 2 me because it's not k square now it is only k in the 2d case it was k square that is 2 me l by h cut pi so if you rearrange it you will find that n is this much here this n and is 2 me under root l by h pi now differentiate dn by d simply this expression you will find it is this you have to only differentiate 2 me under root because this will be a constant for dn by d l by n h pi h cut so l by pi h cut is there 2 me 2 and 2 will cancel out with this two uh, this there is a two factor so that will cancel out and 2 m 
yes okay so there is one by two because of the redundancy factor so that is 2m e and 2m l so 2m is because of this differentiation and it becomes then Now for volume, it is one by, sorry, not for this case. This is not what you need. Yeah, this is it. So if you, um, yes. Yeah, this is it. The density of states per unit energy. Using the chain, this not needed for the general, you can directly differentiate this and use that one by two into two. Per unit volume, per unit energy range. Again, so divide by L for per unit volume. So 2Me under root divided by L. So this is what we obtain this expression. Yeah. And he has rationalized this under root m by m. This is the final expression. So if you see that in this case, the density of states is proportional to one by under root e. Here, it is also proportional to, in this case. This is one by under root e. Here, unlike that previous case, and it is same as when you divide by the volume. So it is one by under root E here. Then when you plot it, this, here it is. So the density states functional dependence, that is energy dependence. This is E energy. This is the function dependent function. This is E, E, E. For three dimensional cases, this is a three dimensional case. You have already done it in solid state physics. There is under root of E function, density of states. Rho is density of states. Here it is density of states for three dimensional case. For two times we have seen it is independent of energy. So it goes straight after a finite value. So when we have one dimensional case, we have the decreasing exponential function. Sorry, energy function, one by under root of E. This is one by under root of E. And for one three di zero dimensional case, what will happen to zero dimensions? when you have confinement in all the directions. So for a zero dimensional case here, that's called a quantum dot, there is no free motion. Because there is no case space to be filled with electrons. Because we have all confined, we have no free degrees of freedom. Like we have in the previous case, because what we saw, we took the, uh, those points which are in the free degrees of uh, motion, where there's a free motion of the particle. But in this case, there is no free motion. So we don't have any case space to be filled with the electrons. And whatever the all the states, they will be discrete, they will be quantized. And what will happen? So the discrete energies will give us a direct delta, that simple delta function. That's why it is delta function here. Because we have, if I draw it here, So what we have taken actually in 2D case, we have to find the density of states per unit area actually. Area was in the free, uh, those degrees of freedom. Which were two, okay. In 1D case, freedom was one. So there was a linear case space. What was this? This was circular case space. This is zero D. So there is no case space once. To be filled. So no case space points are to be filled there. Then what happens actually? There will be confinement to all the three directions and the energy levels will be confined, quantized at 
all in the all the three dimension and you have a finite density of states at a particular point so when you take e versus rho density of states you will see this peak delta yeah direct delta functions so this will be a delta function okay there's that value is actually e minus ec because if we are in the conduction band there's a uh, there are some states but uh, electrons we take the energy below the conduction band because the conduction band is an excited state when we excite the charged particle when we excite the carriers and that is why it is subtracted that energy part from the conduction so we are below the conduction band edge and that is this density of states will become the delta function that is why it is shown in this case here it is delta function is a delta function of e and these are the dispersion relationals and density of states they have always taken it below the conduction band edge that is why it is e minus ec e minus ec here e minus ec so don't worry about that this is a number effective density of states number of states in this range and these are practical applications so we have a quantum wells 2d potential well which can find particle in one dimension and then they are in the two dimensional plane as i already draw them i don't know what happens to the slides Yeah, here it is. Here it is, two-dimensional plane. So they are in the two-dimensional planes here, x, y plane. And quantum wire, like a conducting wire, electrically with quantum transport effect. The transport in these structures, nanostructures, it will be called as quantum transport, like zero dot, uh, zero D nanostructures, which are called quantum dots. They are also called as artificial atoms, collides or clusters. It is not a single atom actually. There are different number, multiple number of atoms, but their arrangement is of a zero dimensional quantum structure that they are confined in all the three directions. That means their directions dimensions are very less than their particular that fundamental length like mean free path, Bohr exciton radius uh, that is first hydrogen orbit radius. So those are some of the fundamental lengths which we have discussed in our first class. First or next, uh, that means second class. So electron appears to zero dimension. That's why it's called a zero dimension because there is no free degree of motion. Confinement is in all the three directions. Here it is the structure. This is the quantum dot actually. So there is a one type of material inside it, there's a layer of another material above it. So it becomes core shell type nanostructure. It is called as core shell type. So this is a core shell coating actually. This becomes core quantum dot. So it is called core shell quantum dot actually. Because it forms a one layer which is inside the this sphere, which is of a nano dimensions, and that becomes its core, and the outer layer becomes its shell. Here, you can say that it contains a single electron to a collection of several thousands of electrons. And size, shape, and number of electrons can be controlled. This is the property of these quantum dots. These are the different dimensions with different wavelengths they emit when they are excited by the external radiation. And actually, there is a concept of exciton. So have you heard of exciton? Yes. Okay, so that's the bound electron hole pair. Okay, so if you confine the electrons within that much of dimension, uh, which is of the dimension of that uh, uh, exciton radius, Bohr exciton radius, so quantum mechanical, these confinement effects will arise. Okay, this is just an example. These are fabrication methods, we will study them separately, so we no need to go there. I think in this unit, there is nothing more than this. I have already covered all those things. This was just a brief, this 